After the Three Gorges Dam saw its highest level of flooding this year, authorities admitted the dam has been distorted, leaked and moved. The next day, officials downstream blasted open a dam to release the excess water. NTD's Juliet Song has more. Over the weekend, China's famous Three Gorges Dam, located on the Yangtze River, saw its most severe flooding yet this year. The same day, authorities admit the dam has moved, leaked, and distorted. This past Saturday, a new round of flooding hit the dam, with incoming water reaching over 60,000 cubic meters per second. That's twice the rate of the next most powerful flood. On the same day, Chinese state media Xinhua reported the dam has moved, leaked and distorted. But the report didn't give out specific numbers, instead emphasizing that all major parameters are within normal range. Together with heavy rain, the increased water from the dam has also sent the water level downstream soaring. That led authorities from Anhui province to blast open a local dam during the wee hours of the morning in effort to elevate the pressure. Chinese officials used the same tactic back in 1998, the country's worst flooding in recent decades. On Monday morning, the water level inside the Three Gorges Dam was still above its flood warning level. That's as it may be hit with another round of flooding on Tuesday. While the Yangtze River flooding persists, another major river, located further north, is also getting overwhelmed. That leaves the region between the two rivers at risk, which happens to be one of China's most important economic centers. Juliet Song, NTD News. Over 30 U.S. lawmakers and officials, as well as over 600 lawmakers worldwide, put pen to paper to denounce a 21-year-long persecution. They condemned the Chinese regime for its crackdown on practitioners of Falun Gong. July 20th marks the 21st year since the CCP began its persecution of the spiritual group. Dozens of officials and U.S. lawmakers from both parties are expressing solidarity with Falun Gong practitioners and thanking them for advocacy of religious freedom. The spiritual group has faced imprisonment and torture in China. Last year, an independent tribunal in London found that the Chinese regime has and continues to harvest the organs of Falun Gong adherents and sell them for profit. China's state media initially promoted the practice for its effectiveness in improving health. But former communist leader Zhang Zemin launched the persecution in 1999, when the spiritual group became so popular that the number of people practicing exceeded that of Communist Party membership. In a video statement, the commissioner at the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom called on the Chinese regime to stop its assaults on the practice. Communist China is the greatest threat to religious freedom in the world. No one else is even close. He applauded the spiritual group's anti-persecution efforts and called for the U.S. government to conduct an investigation into the allegations of forced organ harvesting in China. I want to thank all of you for your tireless advocacy on behalf of religious freedom. I look forward to continuing to work with you to ensure that all of the citizens of China can one day enjoy freedom and worship in peace. U.S. Ambassador-at-Large for International Religious Freedom Sam Brownback also issued a video statement saying the CCP is at war with faith, but it's a war they will not win. May next year be not the 22nd anniversary that we recognize the persecution, but the first year we recognize the freedom of the people of Falun Gong and everybody throughout China to practice their faith freely. 14 Democrat and 15 Republican lawmakers sent letters to show solidarity. Falun Gong, also known as Falun Dafa, is a spiritual discipline that includes meditative exercises and a set of moral teachings based on the principles of truthfulness, compassion and tolerance. At its peak of popularity, the discipline was practiced by around 70 million people before the persecution. Outside the U.S., over 600 lawmakers from 30 countries issued a joint statement calling on the CCP to immediately stop its brutal campaign against Falun Gong. Bitter Winter, a magazine focusing on religious freedom in China, called the amount of the international support unprecedented, notwithstanding the fake news spread by the CCP. Her name is Zhong Fang Yang. She passed away on July the 2nd, 2002. She was 37 years old.
According to the Falun Dafa Information Center, more than 4,000 practitioners are confirmed to have died from torture. But due to the difficulty of obtaining information from China, the center said the true death toll is likely to be many times higher. And the brutality continues today. At least 27 Falun Gong practitioners were persecuted to death this year by May. Ten of them died during detention at a local police station or prison. Penny Joe, NTD News. And Secretary of State Mike Pompeo also demanding that the regime stop its persecution of the spiritual meditation practice. Pompeo said 21 years of persecution of Falun Gong practitioners is far too long and it must end. This time last year, he welcomed a survivor of a Chinese labor camp who was tortured for her faith in Falun Dafa to speak at the U.S. Ministerial to Advance Religious Freedom. The Falun Dafa Information Center says Pompeo's statement and long-standing support will inspire millions of Chinese people to continue their pursuit of freedom. And the UK Foreign Secretary also says he's deeply concerned about the Chinese regime persecuting people of faith after he was urged to consider sanctions on human rights abusers. Our UK correspondent Jane Werrell has more. This traditional Chinese meditation practice is banned in China. Falun Gong is a practice of gentle exercises and meditation. Uh, a bit like Tai Chi or yoga. It also has teachings based on truthfulness, compassion, tolerance. So it's, it's a mind and body practice. For 21 years, practitioners of Falun Gong, also known as Falun Dafa, have been tortured for their belief in China. China's handling of the pandemic and Beijing imposing a new repressive security law on Hong Kong has put China's human rights violations in a starker light at the core of the UK government. China stands condemned in the World uh, Court of Rights in relation to their abuse against Christians, against Uyghur Muslims. And this week is the 21st anniversary of the persecution of the Falun Gong, whose followers have been subject to commercial organ harvesting with the knowledge... He urged the UK to sanction human rights abusers who persecute Falun Gong practitioners. The Foreign Secretary is concerned, though he says the challenge will be to establish the evidence and pinpoint the individuals responsible. But we are deeply concerned about the persecution of Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, Falun Gong practitioners and others on the grounds of religion or belief in China, uh, including, I think, with the new national security legislation, the risk that that grip only gets tighter. Disturbing crimes highlighted by the China Tribunal held in London last year unanimously concluded that forced organ harvesting has happened in China on a substantial scale and still continues. They found the main source of organs came from practitioners of Falun Gong. Uh, we in this world and here at the House of Commons will be their voice, will be their voice for the voiceless, a voice for those who are being abused verbally and physically. Many other MPs uh, are, are particularly moved by what is happening to the Falun Gong. A Foreign Office minister said during a June debate that the government takes the reports on organ harvesting very seriously. Falun Gong practitioners, uh, because of the healthy lifestyle that they lead, uh, they don't drink, they don't smoke, so their organs are generally healthy and so they've been targeted uh, for the barbaric practice of, of forced organ harvesting. At this peaceful protest outside the Chinese embassy in London, practitioners are free to protest and raise awareness of 21 years of persecution. Jane Worrell, NTD News, London. Britain has decided to suspend its extradition treaty with Hong Kong immediately and indefinitely. Prime Minister Johnson says Britain has to think about human rights. NTD UK's Neil Woodrow will bring us more news from Europe. An extradition deal takes effect if someone in the UK is suspected of a crime in Hong Kong. The Hong Kong authorities can ask the UK to hand them over to face justice, and vice versa. And the government has decided to suspend the extradition treaty immediately and indefinitely. According to Raab, the UK will not reactivate the deal before there are clear and robust measures preventing it from being misused under the new national security law. The UK fears that people extradited to Hong Kong could be sent on to China. We have to think about the, the human rights, the, the rights of the people of Hong Kong to participate in democratic processes and people here uh, from Hong Kong and how, that, how those changes affect them. The UK has also extended its arms embargo to Hong Kong, which has been applied to mainland China since 1989. 
This comes as tension is already rising between the UK and China. China has already threatened to retaliate over Britain's Huawei ban.